You have heard the phrase, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I love the word doomed in there. That's attributed to Winston Churchill, among many others. You've heard the quote before. But the sentiment, no matter who you attribute it to, is the same. The failure of memory is a fatal disease in any culture. For that reason, cultures have numerous triggers to help us remember important things. Holidays are one of those triggers. Tomorrow is a significant trigger in American culture. Family discussions are triggers. School lessons are triggers. Monuments that we see. Government proclamations, and there are others. But cultures that begin to be long in the tooth begin to ignore the things that they should remember. And by the way, they begin to remember things that aren't actually true. The people of the United States are beginning to suffer from an increasing failure of memory. And part of our focus today is to remember. Memorial Day is a special holiday of all of our national holidays. This one is unique because it is set aside to remember those who have given their lives for our country and our freedom. Independence Day is also a national holiday, as is Flag Day and Labor Day and Patriots Day and Veterans Day. I like Veterans Day. I happen to have a birthday on that day. And Thanksgiving, probably my favorite holiday of the year for reasons that relate to the fact that Thanksgiving is really hard for businesses to corrupt. But they all have their place in American lore. Among them, Memorial Day is a unique focus. No other national holiday remembers the sacrifice of others so we could be free like this one does. In that sense, it is the most like our Christian memorials. Because both baptism and the Lord's Supper focus on the sacrifice of one so that we could be free. This morning we're going to focus on the, on the two together. Our national focus is important to American liberty. Our spiritual focus is important to Christian liberty. And both play an important role in our lives. So let's take a look quickly at our national role of remembering. We remember in a number of ways, and we've mentioned several of them. The first of those is the role of holidays. Like the one we are celebrating this weekend, holidays give us several times every year to remember. Each of these holidays come around every year. So each year we have the opportunity to pause as a culture and remember who we are. The health of a culture is not just its focus on where, focus on where it's going. It is, its, it is its also its focus on where it has been. Amen. On Memorial Day, we remember and mourn our fallen heroes. If you fly a flag, tomorrow you're supposed to lower that flag to half-staff at noon. I won't be here tomorrow. If somebody would like to come by and lower our church flag to half-staff at noon, or by 8 a.m. and raise it back up at noon, I would appreciate that. Did I say that right? We lower it until noon and then raise it back up. On Flag Day, we honor the U.S. flag and remember those who have fought and died defending her. On Independence Day, we remember and celebrate our national birth. On Labor Day, we remember and celebrate those who put their shoulders to the load and work. On Patriots Day, we honor the memory of those who died on September 11th. There's a difference between Patriots Day and Memorial Day because the ones we're remembering on Patriots Day are people who just went to work, who were brutally murdered by some people who decided that they hate the United States. They weren't at work trying to defend their country. They were just at work trying to work. And their lives were taken. On Veterans Day, we honor those who have birthdays on that day. <laughs> Actually, we, we don't, most of us don't do that, but my family does. <laughs> but we honor those who have worn the uniform of the U.S. and often 
those who continue to wear the uniform of the U.S., but our focus is on those who have worn the uniform and have stepped away from that service, but they are veterans. On Thanksgiving, we remember the provision of the Lord for the early settlers on this continent. And much like Israel of old, we have several national holidays every year to remind us where we came from and how we got where we are. The role of holidays is to periodically remember. Always be skeptical of those who want to change the focus of these memorial holidays. Then there is the role of families. I grew up in a family that recounted the stories of our national history on a regular basis. I heard about George Washington. And yeah, I heard about the cherry tree. And I heard about Valley Forge. Then about Gettysburg and Normandy. I heard about people my parents and relatives knew who had fought in the wars, some of whom died. I heard about the first Thanksgiving. I heard about the words of God etched on the Liberty Bell. In my office, one of my old Bibles is open to the passage that is etched on the Liberty Bell on a stand in my office. I heard about how the presidents took the oath of office with their hand on the Bible. Before I heard about those and many other important parts of our heritage in school, I heard about them at home and continued to hear about them at home. My brother sent me something this week, and it is, I don't know if we'll get a chance to see it or not, it is entitled, A Soldier Died Today. And before you could open that, there was a picture of my dad in his World War II uniform. How many years ago would this be now? 65 years ago? Standing there, so proud, so excited to be serving the United States. I heard about them at home. The role of families is passing down oral history. I mentioned schools a moment ago that I heard about these things before I went to school, but schools have a role as well. Our schools, and you can go back and look at the at the proclamations back in the history of the United States proclaiming that we were going to have an educational, public educational system in the various states. And you can look at the reasons why they said we need a public educational system. Our schools were founded to be sure that the populace was educated so that they could effectively govern themselves. The schools were given the responsibility to be sure the students understood how our country works and why. Unhappily, many of our schools from elementary to college have lost track of that critical responsibility. Many of the students in our schools today can tell you why we should save the planet. But they can't tell you much, if anything, about the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution Nor are they taught about the role that God has played in our national history, which is significant. If we don't tell our students the truth about our heritage, coming generations won't appreciate the unique and special place the United States has occupied in God's overall plan. The role of schools is national education. Our governments in their various forms and levels also have a responsibility to refresh our national memory. I remember a Daughters of the American Revolution contest, partially sponsored by the federal government. I discovered my fear of public speaking in that contest. (laughs) As a junior high student, I got involved. We who participated had to research some aspect of American history and share what we learned in a speech. I didn't win. But I learned a lot about America. And I learned to appreciate America. 
Again, unfortunately, our government today seems more interested in finding things about the United States that they can criticize. We constantly hear from elected officials how bad we are, how we are the problem on the international scene, how the world would be better off if we acted more like our neighbors. Frankly, I think the world would be better off if our neighbors acted more like we used to act. Our national memory is fading because those who have the responsibility of ensuring that we never forget have themselves forgotten. The role of government is to encourage memory. There is a national role of remembering. Spiritually, we who are Christians also have opportunities to remember as well. Our spiritual memories are, in some ways, more distant than our national memories, although not in every way. But they are every bit as as important and more so. Throughout Scripture, God has encouraged us to remember what He has done. Our Scripture reading this morning was purposefully chosen to note one of the times when God said, Here is a memorial. Here is something I want you to remember. And here is how I want you to set this up so that when future generations come along and say, what do these mean? Not only can you tell them, but it will remind you. This is being set up as a memorial. God placed a rainbow in the sky over Noah in Genesis 9 to call to remembrance his promise not to ever judge the world again. And every time we see a rainbow, those of us who know Scripture are reminded of the fact that God spared Noah and his family and promised never to judge the world by a flood again. It's a memorial. I know, scientifically, it's a bunch of water particles in the sky and the sun's refracting through them. I understand all that, but God set it there. God set up a number of national holidays and feasts to remind Israel of their heritage. Passover is one of those. Do you imagine a more important memorial for a nation than Passover? When God literally brought the nation out, thrust out by their captors, please, leave! Go! Or we're all dead. Booths. Purim, if you're not familiar with Purim, Purim is the national holiday that is set up as a result of the book of Esther and what happened in the book of Esther. Uh, and, And the weekly Sabbath is a weekly memorial. God set up two ordinances to remind us of our Savior's sacrifice. And those two ordinances are baptism and the Lord's Supper. God wants us to remember And he's given us lots of opportunities to do so. The role of God was to establish memorials. But there is a role for Scripture as well. Scripture is the guardian, the treasure house of our faith, and the treasure house that is set up to remind us of our faith. We find not only all these memorials and more, we find the story of God's dealings with mankind starting in Genesis and ending all the way in Revelation. A lot of people don't view the Bible as as, as as a... a whole, a unit that is a whole, but it is. It travels from one end of history to the other end of history. With eternity past on one side, eternity future on the other side. And it is a story of how God is dealing with mankind, how he's dealt with us in the past, how he continues to deal with us right now, and how he will deal with us in the future. We and our forebears for the past three and a half millennia have searched these scriptures to learn about God and his plan. We are constantly reminded in scripture of God's love. We are constantly reminded of his patience. We were talking about long suffering last week in the, uh, uh, in the fruit of the spirit. One of the reasons God builds the long suffering into us is because he's so good at it. And we're the reason he's so good at it. We are constantly reminded of his behind-the-scenes work. We are constantly reminded that he uses ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things. 
Throughout the New Testament, we are reminded that our sin drives a wedge between us and God, but that Jesus died for us to save us from our sin. We are reminded that God keeps his promises, that he keeps his promises to Israel. We may be a little bit unique in that area as, as far as evangelical Christians are concerned, but we really believe that when God made a promise to Israel back in the Old Testament, he didn't decide that he was not going to keep it at some point. Instead, he says, I promised Israel a land, and I'm going to give them a land. Amen. I promised Israel an eternal king to sit on David's throne, and they will have an eternal king who will literally sit on David's throne. God keeps his promises, and he keeps his promises to us as well. We are reminded that God's plan includes a magnificent eternal home, the likes of which I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, quoted, by the way, from Isaiah 64, 4. God has given us a repository of good things to remember, and that repository is Scripture. The role of Scripture is to record memorials. The verse at the head of your outline is from the communion passage in 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 25. In that passage, Paul instructed the Corinthian church to take the bread and the cup in remembrance of Jesus. In the Great Commission, Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, we are commanded to make disciples, to assimilate them into the church, to bring them into the church family via baptism. That's why baptism is next, so you bring them into the church family. And then to train them to serve the Lord Jesus. See, the, whole, the Great Commission is not simply about evangelism. It starts there, but it doesn't end there. It continues on with people becoming part of a local church and getting involved in that local church to the point where they are no longer followers. They're followers of God, but not followers of everybody in the local church. They're leaders. That's the idea behind the Great Commission. And Paul repeats that thought when he gets to... Uh, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, I get my Timothys mixed up. When he tells Paul, look, you need to train men who will teach others also and to continue this thing going. By the way, the mode of baptism, baptism is very important because immersion is the only one that pictures the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's why we do immersion. Well, that and because that's the only word that's used with respect to baptism is the word immersion in Greek. We baptize by immersion because it too is a memorial of Jesus. These ordinances are the responsibility of the local church. Jesus gave them to the church so we would not forget what he did for us. So the next time you're tempted to skip communion... Oh, yeah, Communion Sunday. I think I'll stay home. What's on TV? Where can we go today? Remember this. Jesus gave these ordinances and commanded us to observe them so we would not forget. That's why we do them on, an, on a regular basis. So we will not forget. We are prone to wander. We are prone to forget. The Lord's Supper and baptism are there so that we will not. The role of the church is to remember the Savior. And then finally, there's the role of the family. The family plays a critical role in the process of remembering. Just as American families can either pass along our wonderful national heritage to the benefit of their children or ignore it to their peril, so Christian families can pass along the, the truths of God's word or let someone else try to do it in our place. Someone else may do that. That someone else may be a local church. But you know that someone else might be the kid down the block who doesn't believe. Or the teacher at school who doesn't believe. Or some other person who will pass on information that just isn't so. And if you aren't doing that as a family, if you aren't passing on the word of God to your family, your children can easily become confused by a world that is 
constantly bombarding them with different information. See, the problem is if it's not important to you, it probably won't be important to them. By God's grace, sometimes God snatches kids out of families that couldn't care less and makes them not only his children, but turns them into his servants and they serve the Lord with their lives. By his grace, that happens. But by and large, if you don't care, they won't care. I'm going to get up on my soapbox here. One of the ways that you show that you care is that you're here all the time when the doors are open. Don't find other things that are more important. Be here. And show your kids that this is important to you. Another way you show it's important is that you open your Bible between Sundays. And you read to your kids and you pray with your kids and they find out that this is in fact important to you. In Deuteronomy 6.6, God gave the important responsibility of passing along the faith to parents. And what was true for Israel so long ago is still true for us today. The truth of God's word that Christ loves us and died for us is yours to pass along. Your family needs to hear that from you over and over. The role of families is to point kids to Christ. So what's your role? I want to give you two thoughts as we close here. Your first role as an American, as a Christian, is to remember. Remember the sacrifice as an American of those who have given so much so that we could be free. Don't allow those who would steal our liberty from us to get away with it. A lot of people paid the ultimate price to ensure that we remain free. A lot of people, both inside and outside our country, would love to steal that from us. We have a responsibility to remember. As a Christian, remember the sacrifice of your Savior who gave himself on Calvary's cross so that we would be free. Free from sin. And then have the free gift of eternal life. Remember the sacrifices. And then your second role is to remind. Remind the people you love and who are in your circle of influence that America is a special place. A place where freedom and liberty have been informed by law and justice. A place that God has blessed. A place where the Lord has been honored. A place that remains free because so many gave their lives to keep it so. And as Christians, remind those with whom you come into contact that Jesus loves them so, that, so much so that he died in their place. Remind them that they too can be free from the clutches of sin and from the horrors of an eternal hell. And instead have the gift of eternal life with him in heaven. They will place their faith in Christ. Remind them. Your role is to remember and your role is to remind. 